Hello, everyone. We are going to, uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes um, at 10 o'clock once everybody has an opportunity to uh, start second period. And um, those of you who are joining us from home uh, can, you know, mute yourselves and uh, we'll get started in a minute.
Okay, good morning, everybody. We are going to get started. If everybody in the Zoom call could please um, mute themselves. I am, yeah. So welcome this morning, everybody. We're going to get started. As I mentioned, it's about 10 a.m. And um, So it's working out a few technology items here. And so thanks everybody for being here this morning. Um, we're gonna start with prayer as we start all things. So we'll begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We wanna take this opportunity to thank God for all of the many gifts that we've been given. We thank God for helping us to persevere to this point in the school year, despite all the challenges that we faced as a school and our families, challenges to health, loved ones. We thank God for the many blessings he continues to give us. And we remember especially all of those who have lost their lives during this pandemic. We, uh, we, Remember all of those who have lost their livelihoods. We pray for a speedy end to this pandemic. And we pray especially for the rest of our school year and for a very successful return to in-person learning full-time next week. We especially pray also for our seniors for the class of 2021. We pray that this might be an outstanding last couple of months for them that they can experience uh, all of the great events that any class experiences as they graduate from high school. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, welcome to everybody. Thanks for being here today. And um, I'm going to jump right in uh, to a presentation we want to take some time to talk about our return uh, to, to in-person learning here next week. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. And um, and we're going to talk a little bit about our mission today, our health and safety protocols, uh, our new daily schedule. Um, but we want to do it in the context of talking about the fact that this pandemic is, we want it to be over with, but it's not over with yet. And things are looking uh, much better. Um, you know, vaccinations are happening. Um, 18 year and older, you know, is, you know, um, that's going to be soon, hopefully, where we get, uh, you know, a majority of our population vaccinated. Um, but but there's still a long way to go between now and the end of the year. And we don't wanna let our guards down in school or out of school. That's so important. There has not been any evidence of transmission in school or at a school activity or event. The transmission that's happened is outside of school. And that can happen between kids outside of school. It can happen between people outside of school. Obviously, as we know, oftentimes it's usually happening, exposure is happening in the home um, because a family member oftentimes will, uh, will be exposed maybe in the workplace or at some kind of activity or social activity. So we're asking you to continue to be vigilant. People are starting to loosen up. We know that regulations and restrictions by the state are loosening up in a lot of ways, but we still have to make this a focal point of being successful. Um, and, and, and being aware of just everybody's uh, social, emotional well-being. Um, not everybody's in the same place with this. Some people have been fully vaccinated, um, you know, and are, and are feeling, you know, much better about their situation, whereas other people still have people who maybe live with them or they themselves are in a high-risk category. So we have to continue to be cautious. 
we go back to our mission, rejoicing in hope. Uh, Romans 12, 12, the theme of our year, you know, let's continue to have hope that we're going to get through the end of this year and, and, and have fun. You know, we had the wellness days a, a few weeks ago. Um, those were great days. We want to do as much rejoicing and find as much joy in the rest of this school year as, as we can. We know it's been a challenge uh, in so many ways. You know, we go back to our, our charism, making known the goodness of God. There is so much goodness here at our school, and we have to continue to celebrate that goodness. Um, you know, first and foremost, it's in one another, um, the good people that we have. We've done extraordinarily well, I think, to this point, um, and, and shown tremendous responsibility with the way that we've handled this. We have to continue to do that. We have to root it in our care for one another, right? I think if there's one thing that this pandemic has shown us is how interconnected we are, right? Um, that virus can spread quickly. Um, well, so can love and so can care for one another as well. Um, but we have to understand as we come back full-time in person, as we have been doing so throughout the year, our actions and our decisions affect our brothers and sisters, our classmates. Um, we have to be careful with the way that we behave um, in school and out of school. We have a social responsibility, not just to, the, to ourselves and our own good, but to our common good as a school and as, our, as a common good as a wider uh, community and society as well. Part of our Catholic faith is to, and Catholic mission is to respect science. And we have done that throughout and we're gonna continue to do that. We're following state protocols, we're working with our local board of health um, before any decisions are made. And so we're gonna continue to do that for everyone's safety. Health and safety will continue to be a priority. Self-screening is critical. If you are sick, you need to stay home or go home if you feel start feeling sick in school. Athletics has done, Coach Golden and, and sports teams have done a great job, uh, you know, self-screening every day. Um, before practice. We need to make sure that everybody is home if you start feeling symptomatic. If you think you've been exposed, if someone in your household may have been exposed, err on the side of caution and stay home, okay? Practice good hygiene. We will continue to practice physical distancing, social distancing. The three-foot rule, the CDC, the state of Massachusetts, allows us to be three feet uh, in the classrooms, okay? We're gonna maintain that. It's gonna be close, it's gonna be different come next week, but we need to maintain that. We do have the confidence based on research and science that that is safe. They would not have given schools that latitude if it weren't safe. Outside of the classroom, whether it's before school, after school, in the cafeteria for lunches, the six foot rule does remain, okay? So we have to remember that. We have to stay six feet in those environments. Masks need to be worn at all times and they need to be worn correctly. That means they have to be up over the nose, okay? Wearing your mask like this is not wearing your mask correctly. It has to be up over the nose and it has to be tight fitting. You're not just protecting yourself, you're protecting the people around you. As we know, people could be carriers and be asymptomatic. So you have to wear your masks at all time. Teachers are going to, if you're persistently not following direction, if your mask slips and, you know, whatever, that happens at times. Um, that's fine. But if you're persistently not following that regulation, your teachers or, or we as administrators are, are going to deal with that. I said before and after school, there can't be any congregating before or after school. As we know, you know, the trophy lobby, popular place to hang out after school, can't do it. Got to either go to the cafeteria or the library. And regarding protocols, uh, we want to go over again, if you're symptomatic, close contact or COVID-19 positive to remind ourselves of what that means. So these are the COVID-19 symptoms, okay? And so take a look at them. I know you're familiar with them. Refamiliarize yourself with what could be COVID symptoms. It's a lot of different things. I know it can be a hassle to be symptomatic and have to either quarantine or be tested. I've been there myself this year. Um, the good thing is tests are coming back faster. So we have to err on the side of caution, even when it causes inconvenience. 
because God forbid we get anybody else sick because we didn't want to cause an inconvenience to ourselves, okay? So you have to report if you're symptomatic. If you are symptomatic, like I said, you can either be tested or quarantined. Most people obviously choose to be tested um, and that allows you to a, a negative test reported to uh, Mrs. Fernandes who has done an outstanding job this year. So I'll give a round of applause to Mrs. Fernandes. Let's keep that going. We'll do a standing ovation at some point but you have to stay home and either get a test or quarantine and then we need a copy of that negative test. If you're symptomatic during the school day, go to Mrs. Fernandes in the nurse's office. If it's any of the COVID symptoms, she'll do an assessment and you will be sent home, okay? If you have a positive COVID-19 test, then you have to be quarantined for at least 10 days and then three days have passed with no fever or improvement and other symptoms, okay? You have to notify us or your parents have to notify us immediately, right? If you have a, a positive COVID-19 test, even if you're waiting on one, contact us, okay? Again, a lot of people have erred on the side of caution. They have close contacts in the family. They keep, they keep themselves home on a temporary basis. That's what we want you to do. All right, that's what we want you to do. So make sure that you continue to do that. What's a close contact? That's if you've been within six feet for 15 minutes or longer within a 24 hour period while that person was infectious. And that begins two days prior to the symptom outset, onset. Now I realize that's a little bit of a contradiction. And you know, we've, as a diocese, we're, you know, and the state is aware of this contradiction. So we do have three feet in the classroom but close contacts are six feet. Now, as many of you know, that's already been the case. In many of our classrooms, we were already not at six feet. We were within that. So you might've been at five feet. Well, you still are step established as a close contact. So many of you have already known that experience of being contacted as a close contact, having to quarantine. It's very unfortunate when that happens but that is the reality of what may need to happen. It's had to happen on entire athletic teams where the whole team has had to quarantine for a certain amount of time. That may need to happen, okay? We hope it doesn't, but if it does, we just ask for everybody's patience and understanding. And I know that we only can give a limited amount of information. People are often frustrated and I understand why. We can't give very much information and that's by direction of our diocese and by the local board of health, and that's to protect people's privacy. If you're the one who's COVID-19 positive, you don't want us telling other people that. You don't want us sharing private medical or health information about you to others. So we ask for that same understanding if you are a close contact. We try to give you all the information that we can, but while res respecting people's privacy at the same time. Close contacts, this is different now may return after 10 days, right? And, but con, uh, symptoms, assuming no symptoms, they must be monitored beyond the 10 day period, okay? Used to be 14, now it is 10. When we come back to daily life here, starting on Monday, it's very important to understand there is no temporary remote status without administrative approval. Now what I, I'm not referring to quarantining. So if you need to quarantine because you're symptomatic, you're waiting on a test, somebody in your house has been a close contact and you're erring on the side of caution, you know, you're a close contact yourself, you're respecting the travel advisory, that's another big one we've communicated to your parents, you can get tested and get out of that, otherwise you have to quarantine. Those are all reasons why you would be temporarily remote. If you are not under that category, and we would be aware of that because you've communicated, your parents have communicated that to us, Mrs. Fernandes, Mrs. Williamson, our administration, unless you are temporarily remote with administrative approval in this week, we've gotten a few extenuating circumstances about people, even after we return fully next week, that need to be temporarily remote for good reasons, serious reasons. If we don't approve those, you can't just decide on any given day, I don't feel like coming in. I don't feel like getting up. I know it's going to be a change. I know that a lot of you have enjoyed, and that's a good thing. You get an extra hour of sleep if you're home, if, when you're remote. That's great, uh, especially for teenagers, but that's not the reality that we have right now. Um, and now it's back to school. 
We want people on time, in uniform, okay? We've, we've been very, very uh, easygoing, lax on letting kids wear sweatshirts and stuff like that. But everybody really should be in full uniform. Wear your fleeces, wear your sweaters if you're cold. Hopefully the warmer weather will, you know, uh, obviously make it so that you don't need to wear those. But we want people to be looking sharp on Monday in uniform on time. I skipped athletic eligibility. If you are not given permission to be temporary remote, if you don't have good reason to be out and that's received administrative approval and you just decide to stay home when you're supposed to be in school, you may risk your athletic eligibility or any eligibility for after school activities. So be mindful of that. Um, so again, arrive between 7.30 and 7.55. We kept the daily schedule beginning at eight, ending at about the same time, not to throw all the beginning or the end of the day into upheaval in terms of commuting and, and getting to school. Go right to your first period class. If you're early, you go to the cafeteria and you stay distanced, okay? Um, there's no congregating, as I mentioned before, before or after school. I'm gonna go over the schedule in a minute. Flex will be a part of the lunch and fourth period. Actually, I'm gonna go over that right now. Just give me one second. Okay, hold on one sec. Um, hopefully you can see my uh, my screen, my schedule here that I'm looking at. And so, you know, the schedule, you know, we tried to keep basically the same schedule. The only way we could figure out lunches the reason why we did that is so that we could fit the number of people into the lunch uh, rooms as we could. And so, um, you know, because we did expand the number of tables we put in the cafeteria, but we were, were limited to keep people six feet apart. And when the weather's good, like on a day like today, people can go outside and we should have plenty of space. But we had to put flex lunch and period four into that period. Now, a better way to, I think, understand this. Um, of course, it's not up here right now. We are going to uh, share for you. We're going to share for you um, and post around the school the fourth period, but I'll, I'll go over it in a second. So this is going to be the type of schedule that you're going to get sent over the weekend. Mrs. Lovegrove is going to work over the weekend. Thank, thank God for Mrs. Lovegrove. She's going to work very hard. Get all the teacher and student schedules emailed for you for Monday morning. So all your regular periods are going to function as usual. All your study halls, any of that stuff is going to function as usual. It's going to be the fourth period that is going to be different. Okay. So that's the thing that you need to uh, be aware of during that period of time. So, um, locker use will be limited and there will be one way directions, there will be one-way directions as there already is in the hallways. Okay, so respect that. Just keep your distance in the hallways. It, it is. It needs to be single file. We need to get back to single file in the hallways, keeping your distance. I know people like to socialize, but we need to start tight and on, on, uh, um, on Monday and, and, you know, be disciplined on Monday starting off so that we can have a good start. And then, you know, we don't want to start loose and then have to tighten up. We'll start tight, disciplined, and we'll go from there. So we need everybody's cooperation as much as possible. And I'm confident that knowing our community, that we will have that cooperation and we will do well, and this will be a successful restart. Okay. Um, but it's, it's not, we know it's not going to be without issue. So, uh, you know, as we deal with issues, as they will inevitably come up, let's deal with one another and deal with every issue patiently, with understanding, 
um, respectfully dealing with one another um, as we as is the norm, I think, here in our community. So um, I know Mr. O'Brien is on this call. Did you want to add anything, Mr. O'Brien? No, it's it. the, the, the hallways is going to be the hallways are going to be very important that we stay in single file. Uh, we can't bunch up in the hallways. Uh, we'll have faculty out there helping. Um, all of us will be helping on this. So we just we just we just, you know, ask that you uh, be patient and, and keep a single file um, in the proper side of the hallway, the right side. And everything will go Everything will go great. And Mr. O'Brien and Mrs. Reginis have been going through all of the classrooms. Maybe you've seen them after school, doing all the work of mapping out every classroom, working with teachers to make sure it all works. So thank you to Mr. O'Brien and thank you to Mrs. Reginis. Um, I said thank you to Mrs. Lovegrove earlier. Mrs. Williamson has been a, you know, this has been a very tough year with attendance and she's been outstanding. Um, so thanks to Mrs. Williamson. And like I said, Mrs. Lovegrove, it's going to be working this weekend to get all of the schedules out. So um, thank you to Mrs. Lovegrove. We had to kind of wait until the end of the day today to change the schedules in our, in our database system. So there may be questions. There may be uh, things we're trying to answer as many of them as possible. Um, I am just going to, if you want to bear with me one second here. I am just going to remind people. We'll put this out there for um, for for kids as well, for the students as well. But if you have first lunch, if you have first lunch, class is always second, and flex is always last. Okay. If you have second lunch, flex is always first, and your flex period during fourth period. This is important. Your flex period during fourth period is the same as your class fourth period, just like. Just like it is right now, it's a continuation of second. Now it's part of fourth. So you might have it, if you have second lunch, you'll go to flex first, but that's to your fourth period class. You're gonna get that flex period and then you have class after lunch in the same class period. If you have third lunch, class is always first followed by flex, okay? So this is going to make a, for a little bit of a challenge, obviously when it comes to, um, uh, activities, because we will not all have one common flex period at this point, which which will be a challenge for us. Um, and we still want to have as many activities and, and things going on as possible. So I think I've covered everything. It still gives you a little bit of time for, um, you know, for uh, uh, your 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 break here for uh, flex and, and a mask break. Um, and mask breaks, by the way, before I forget, those will be a part of your uh, flex again. And, you know, if you obviously, if you need that earlier in the day, just talk to a teacher individually. Um, and locker use, you know, we want to make it so that you go to your locker before your fourth period class. Okay. So you pack for periods one, two, and three, and then you can uh, repack for periods four and five. So you don't have to carry everything uh, for the whole day. But it's no lingering at lockers, it's get your stuff and go. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for everybody. We're going to be successful. We're going to do this. It's going to be a good start next week. Have a great weekend. God bless and go Spartans.